charge conservation wheels. So uh, uh, if I perform this global phase transformation or gauge transformation, you, you can easily check that this Lagrangian L goes to L prime equal to F. Lagrangian is invariant. So this is one symmetry. And remember that I separate psi into psi L and psi R. So one might ask, under this transformation, what happened to psi R and psi L separate? You can easily check again, okay? That uh, psi R goes to E to the I theta psi R, psi L goes to E to the I theta psi L. They transform in the same way, okay? And uh, according to Neuber theorem, that they must, uh, 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 exist conserved quantities associated with uh, in symmetries or invariance, invariances under transformation. And this particular invariance, the associate conserved current is this subject, is this animal, okay? And the name is, it is called vector current. So, uh, as you know that the conserved quantity is the conserved quantity Q. It's the integral, the special integral of the time component of this four, four current. Uh, okay. So, uh, so the vector current is conserved according to Neuter theory. The second symmetry now seems to become uh, interesting. It's the so-called uh, invariance under chiral transformation, okay, which refers to the fact that when you transform psi into psi prime equal to the I C the gamma phi psi, the Lagrangian L goes to L prime equal to L again. Okay. Uh, I, will not verify that fact explicitly, but uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's very simple. And again, if I look at the psi r component, then under this transformation, it will go to e to the i theta psi r. But the psi l component will go to e to the minus i theta psi l. So you can see that they now transform differently under chiral transformation. The right-handed component and left-handed component, when I say handed, that is chirality, okay. The uh, positive chirality path and left-handed chirality path transform oppositely or differently. And again, the association, the asso uh, you can see that uh, if the Lagrangian contains a mass term, then uh, it will not be invariant under this transformation because the master mixed left and right, and since they do not transform the same, uh, it will, this term will not be invariant. Okay, so, okay. Now, without such term, the theory is invariant under chiral transformation. The associated conserved current is the so-called actual vector current. The terminology is from uh, uh, high energy uh, uh, physics. Uh, let's not really to worry about this, okay? So, I just want to show you that, uh, okay, this current, associated current, uh, is psi bar gamma mu gamma phi psi, and it's written as in terms of psi r and psi l. Oh, I left r and l here. Okay, sorry. Okay, it is psi r bar gamma mu psi r minus psi l bar gamma mu psi l, and it is conserved. So classically, uh, uh, this uh, phenomenon governed by a theory defined by this Lagrangian, okay? This current is conserved, and this current, this actual vector current is conserved, okay? And I just like to say that uh, if you look at the, the spatial integral of the time component of uh, uh, vector current, actual vector current separately, they call it QV and QA. And uh, Q will be proportional to number of right-handed fermion and number of, and plus number of left-handed fermion. And Q 
A will be number of right hand fermion minus number of left hand fermion. So uh, we expect that uh, uh, these two quantities uh, are conserved. That is independent of time. Okay, they are conserved independent of time. Even in the presence of uh, interactions, for example, in EM interaction. But in 1969. So this is the hi history part. Of when I say that, I first I must tell you some formal stuff and uh, uh, some history. So, so in 1969, three physicists, Adler, Bell, and Jacquet. Uh, Adler worked by himself, Bell and Jacquet uh, were another team. Okay, so two papers. They uh, through calculation of Feynman diagrams. Okay. Realize that uh, the actual vector current, the uh, before derivative, the, the before divergence, so this divergence, before divergence, before divergence, the actual vector current, instead of being zero, okay, we expect that it is zero by noise theory, which is a classical theory. Is not zero, but proportional to a funny subject. Okay, this is the epsilon mu nu rho sigma. This is a totally anti-symmetric tensor. Uh, that is, uh, I suppose I do not need to explain this is rather so. Uh, uh, for example, two dimension is epsilon i j, three dimension is epsilon i j k. Uh, i j k refers to one, two, three, and here four dimensional epsilon mu nu rho sigma refers to uh, uh, each index refers to zero or one or two or three. And whenever two indices are the same, this is zero. And uh, if it's zero, one, two, three, it is one. And if you exchange any any two indices, you flip the sign. Okay, anyway, it is totally different. So it is proportional to f of mu nu rho sigma, f mu nu, f rho sigma. F mu nu is the uh, field stress tensor it is the, uh, just the uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, field strength. Okay. That is E and B. If you write out the component explicitly, it will be proportional to electric field dot magnetic field. Okay. E dot B. This is a scalar and this is a scalar. Okay. And because this contradicts the usual expectation, so people call it a normal. It is unusual. It is strange. It is not good. Okay, so it's called chiron. Oh, I should not say it's not good because it is nature. So uh, we don't talk about good or bad. But uh, this formula will be responsible for the decay of pi zero, also mentioned by 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 Phil Anderson in his uh, year two thousand uh, fifty today uh, uh, article. Okay, it was a very big surprise. Okay, now. Uh, so uh, maybe I spent too much time. I <laughs> more than I should. Okay. Uh, I I I just formally tell you what chiral normally is in quantum uh, field theory. Okay. So we'll try to understand um, what this means really. Okay. Although people uh, first discovered by explicit calculation, the calculation is certainly not trivial. If you take a quantum field theory course, uh, course uh, you will learn the calculation. Okay, uh, it, it, it is not trivial for many reasons. One of them is that this diagram is divergent. Okay. So you need to regularize the so-called regularizing. That's make it finite. And as you know, that there are infinite number of ways to make a divergent quantity finite. Okay, so. Uh, so there were arguments then about uh, the correctness of this, but uh, uh, pretty soon people accept this. But they still feel uh, that this effect, this anomaly is rather mysterious. It is indeed mysterious. And uh, it was mysterious then. Uh, now I think that uh, it was, uh, should not be mysterious anymore. Okay. And I will tell you, I'll, okay, uh, so the rest of my lecture is the 
or explaining the, the physics behind the chiral anomaly. And I will show you that I think the best example uh, displaying this anomaly will not be this high decay. It will be uh, essential in the second uh, transparency. Uh, it will be in one dimensional quantum transport and quantum Hall effect. Okay, so you can regard quantum Hall effect as an exhibition of this strange thing, okay, which should not be strange. So let me come back to physics. Questions so far? Okay, so uh, almost starts. Yes. Classically, it should be conserved. It is indeed conserved. The view? Classical. So quantum mechanical. That's right, yes. So you can see that uh, uh, right, this is a purely quantum mechanical effect. Okay. It involves quantum fluctuation. So only. That's right. I mean, if no, you don't have to uh, have massless fermions to calculate this diagram. Okay, if uh, fermions are massive, there are extra terms on the right hand side. Okay, but I'm looking at the simplest case that is uh, the massless fermion case. Okay, so let's come back to the uh, physics. Okay. Uh, So I will be talking about, let's see. I'll be talking about this. Okay. One dimensional transport of charges. Uh, I don't remember when the article appeared. There was an article by Van Houten and B. Maker. Again, this is the feature today article. And uh, uh, the title is Quantum Quantum Context. So you can you can find it uh, by Google. So uh, the, uh, I, I just copied this picture from from this graph. Okay. So uh, you can see that again. This is a a, a two dimensional electron gap. You may not see it. This is two dimensional electron gap clearly. Now, somehow experimentalists can, can narrow the passage, okay, so that you can effectively regard the, the flow of, 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 of charge from left-hand side to right-hand side as a one-dimensional flow. Okay. So I schematically uh, uh, show here, okay. And this is the... Uh, the chemical potential of voltage, electrochemical potential of left hand side, and the uh, chemical potential of right hand side. Okay. So what you do is that uh, you apply a voltage difference and you measure the current I. And this is what you find. Okay, you measure voltage, you measure I. So, so, so let me say. So voltage, so the voltage is the difference between mu L and mu R. So you can say that, you can say that V is mu L minus mu R. Okay, so V. So you can change V and measure I. And you take the ratio. And you find that the conductance of the system is equal to E squared over H times an integer. And this integer, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I missed a two. I should, okay, if you can see uh, here, it is two e squared over h. Okay, remember uh, in my second transparency, uh, the g is equal to n times two e squared over h. Okay, so uh, 
you can see that there is this plateau in your data. Okay, step like function. Uh, so one, two, three, so and so forth. It is not perfect, but it, 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 I see it, 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 it is okay. Oh, I should, maybe this is slightly better. I don't know whether it is slightly better. Okay, uh, similar system. Okay, the physics is the same. So conductors in unit 2E squared over H. And uh, you can change the so-called gate voltage. Okay, never mind what it means. So uh, this is, uh, right, the data shows stepwise uh, behavior. So this is 2E squared over H times an integer. Now, how do you explain this? We would like to explain this. Um, I suppose some of you have already uh, learned how to derive this in your solid state uh, uh, class, okay? But, uh, uh, but I think some of you uh, have not heard this uh, or Do not know how to derive this and so I will derive here, derive that formula now. So I regard the system as a one-dimensional conductor, <coughs> okay, and as you know that the standard one-dimensional anti-momentum dispersion relation is, is okay, uh, I'm sorry, I, I will not go back to uh, 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 deriving this explicitly. Uh, I suppose that you have learned this. Uh, the elementary quantum mechanical uh, 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 class, or in, for example, Feynman lecture, uh, volume three, somewhere, okay. Uh, when he talked about one dimensional lattice, and uh, uh, he derived from uh, uh, quantum mechanical equation, that is shading the equation. The energy, the relation between energy and the momentum case momentum. Remember I said H bar equals one for the moment. Okay. I will put H bar back to all the formula at the end. This is just for simplicity. So this is the dispersion, one dimensional dispersion. This is just a part of this dispersion. Okay. Now at the Fermi point, so no matter where, so suppose that this is the Fermi point. At the Fermi point Uh, you plus minus kf. We can approximate the spectrum by linear dispersion relation. That is, E of k uh, is linearly uh, related to k. Okay, so the right branch is E of k equal to V k minus kf, and the left branch is E of k equal to minus V k plus kf, and V is the form of the velocity. It's more or less clear the law of speed of light in, um, in, in, in particle. Okay. And again, for convenience, we can shift the momentum of each branch uh, by constant minus kf and kf respectively. So that the dispersion relation becomes E of k equal to plus minus V k. Okay. Remember that uh, first we have this cosine k dispersion. Then because we are only interested in phenomena very uh, uh, with scale very near kf. Okay. So we linearize the dispersion. And then we shift it by kf and minus kf respectively and get. Get this relay, this dispersion. Okay, so E of k equal to plus minus v k. You can call it k prime, but the, the k prime and k are just they, they just differ by, by kf or minus kf. Okay. And let's for a moment assume that the k could be extended to 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 infinity, okay. And you see that a Dirac light dispersion uh, here, okay. So 
Um, we even have Dirac equation in ordinary one-dimensional conductor. And, um, there will be interesting consequences. So therefore, there are two types of fermions. The right moving ones described by psi r of x minus vt, and the left moving ones described by psi l of x plus vt. And uh, so a, 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 a wave function can be uh, it's the sum of these two kinds of modes, these two kinds of uh, excitation, right moving and left moving. And if I write out the Lagrangian, now you can see that uh, the precise R, uh, so, right, so what's a Lagrangian for? You can derive a question motion from the Lagrangian. So if you look at this, the psi r, since it is a function of x minus vt, it is annihilated by this operator. Okay, so, so the equation of motion for psi r is just this equal to zero. And so this is an equation. Similarly, the equation for psi l is this part equal to zero. This operator, dt minus vdx, operated on psi l equal to zero. Okay, so this is the Lagrangian. So far, I haven't uh, missed any, okay, so, so every detail should be clear, okay, because it is so simple, okay, unlike a four-dimensional case, okay, uh, in, in, this is in two dimension, and uh, you can see the appearance of Dirac, Dirac Lagrangian, okay, so everything is explicit, so, uh, so you have uh, right moving, left moving uh, dispersion. Now, this Lagrangian, this Lagrangian, I can write it in putting it into another form. That is, if I define gamma zero by this two by two matrix, gamma one by this two by two matrix, and I call psi, I, I write psi as a two by one matrix. Here, the psi it's just a, 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 a complex wave function. It's just a, 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 a one component, just ordinary one component, uh, shading the uh, like uh, uh, wave function. Okay. But here, the psi is a two by one spinner. If you define uh, such object, you can find that the Lagrangian can be written in this way, okay? I V psi bar gamma mu d mu psi. Okay. So this is the uh, Dirac Lagrangian I introduced in my introduction of uh, formal stuff, okay? Although previously it was in uh, four dimensions, three plus one dimensions. Here it is in one plus one dimension, okay? But uh, it is easier uh, so that I can, I can, I can, have everything explicitly, explicitly before your eyes. Okay. So you cannot complain that uh, you, 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 you missed an a, a, a equation or you didn't explain this or explain that. Okay. And, we, and uh, again, uh, there is a, you can define a gamma phi matrix. Uh, it, it is unfortunate that uh, previously when I defined gamma phi, uh, it was in three plus one dimension. So gamma phi is equal to i gamma zero gamma one gamma two gamma three. Okay, and there is no gamma four. With gamma four, uh, some would say it's just gamma zero. So you begin with gamma phi. Okay, but, and in, 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 in what in what this is one plus one dimension. This is one special dimension. Okay, plus time. Okay, it's one plus one or two dimension two Euclidean dimension. Uh, uh, it, it's a bad habit. Uh, this is still called gamma phi. Right? Okay, you may wonder why this phi. So presumably you can call it gamma zero, one, two, gamma three. Okay. Anyway. So uh, with such Lagrangian, then again, we have symmetry. Okay, so again, the Lagrangian, although here we are talking about systems in one plus one dimension. So the Lagrangian is invariant under two transformations. Again, the first is uh, the global gate transformation, global phase transformation. 
and which rotate the faces of side A and plus side L in the same way as I uh, said before. And associate conserved current is this, the same as before. And the second is, again, the chiral transformation. And this transformation rotates the faces of psi i and psi l in the opposite way. Again, the same as before. And the associated conserved current is the uh, actual vector current, J mu phi. Okay. And this is psi bar r, gamma mu psi r minus psi l bar gamma mu psi l. It is conserved. Now, well, we have chiral anomaly in the system. Okay, because uh, I said that in, in three plus one dimensions, uh, this conservation law breaks down. It's no longer true. People found that in 1969. Well, the chiral anomaly uh, also appeared in this one plus one dimensional system. That is one dimensional conductor. And again, I remind you, in one dimension, uh, chiral means left moving or right moving. Okay, without back scattering. Okay. Back scattering means that a particle is moving to all right and somehow scattered with another particle and turn 180 degree move to the left. So this is back scattering. And if the if the theory, if uh, there exists a mass term in the Lagrangian, and this mass term would give you back scattering, right? Because the right moving turns into left moving. Okay. But if you do not have back scattering, then presumably uh, the, 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 the theory is chirally invariant and left right symmetric. And remember, this left to right symmetry presumably is still good, even if you introduce electromagnetic interaction. Right, I emphasize this. If the if the theory is free without interactions, then then the theory is certainly left right symmetric. But even if you have electromagnetic interaction, because of the electromagnetic interaction will not change the chirality or the handedness. So even in with electromagnetic interaction, the theory remains left to right symmetric. And what that means. Oh, first, uh, uh, so uh, as you know, uh, because we already use this, the, the concept of Fermi point, uh, KF, so uh, I just remind you that uh, uh, all the uh, negative energy states are field. Whereas high energy physics call uh, the field negative energy uh, state Dirac C, the condensed matter physics call it Fermi C, and they are the same thing. So this is my ground state. My ground state contains, uh, you would say, uh, ideal the infinite number of negative energy uh, electrons. Okay, so now uh, we couple a background gauge field uh, to fermion. So just as before, I'm sorry, I missed a side here. Okay, side bar gamma mu d mu plus i mu, I miss a side here. This is completely the same as in the two plus one dimension. Okay, now uh, the energy becomes e k minus e a one. Uh, suppose I choose the the, 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 the gauge a zero equal to zero. Okay, this is just a gauge choice. And uh, 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 we have two branches, and these two branches, the energy, the, the energy of each state will be affected by the existence of background uh, of gauge field, and the 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 the, the dispersion uh, relation becomes this two. Now, if we apply a uniform 